Good morning, good morning. <laughs> all right, all right. Hello, everybody. What a great, magnificent day. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. All right. <laughs> Let these trouble they be done. Come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these trouble they be done. I tell you, come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these trouble days be done. All right, folks. <laughs> this is Dr. Herbert Harris. And this is our daily success reading, number 151. What you say, babe, babe. Thank you, Ralph. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, folks, this is going to be a great day. Let me have a little coffee here because mm, talking about something that's very, very powerful. Something I think that's going to change our lives. Mm. Our topic for, day, for today is how to create wealth. Very interesting. And this is, of course, daily reading from our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, the Super Achiever Edition that is, of course, available on uh, Amazon, on uh, our website, herbertharris.com, and it's available on our special website, www.the12uls.com. And thank you so many of you ordered the book over the weekend. Whatever I said, I'm going to keep saying it because I mean, we saw an increase of orders over the weekend. Marita and some, many others just jumped on it. So thank you so much. And they're, of course, getting the special, the, uh, the absolutely special audio book, the 12 Universal Laws of Success audio book. And even those who buy it on Amazon, if you buy it and you email a copy of your receipt, uh, to me, to herbert at herbertharris.com. I will make sure you get an, a download of the free six-hour audiobook version of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. So let's, let's start reading today because we're on page 154. And this is a part of the eighth law of success, of course, the law of value. And the law of value really says, how do you exchange your treasures, the things that are important to you to get other things in return? How do you give your time? Do you invest your time or you just spend your time? So once it's gone, it's gone forever. How do you spend, how do you invest your, your money? You know, is it just for immediate consumption or, or is there an expectation of return? How do you invest your energy? Do you put your efforts and your, your, your physical energy into pursuing a particular goal or are you just, as they say, chilling? So this idea of the, how to create wealth is incredible. And let's look at this on page 154, how to create wealth. There are three basic ways to create wealth. Number one, wages and salaries. Number two, income from a business. Number three, income from investments. I want to look at a very common scenario. Don't worry about the numbers, the size of the numbers. It's the principle that we're looking at. Let's assume that you're 40 years old. You don't own a business. You have no in investments, but you have a good job paying you $36,000 a year. So what can you do? And how long will it take for you to accumulate enough wealth or assets to guarantee yourself $36,000 a year in income for life? What do you have to do to take the salary that you're getting right now, for example, $36,000, what do you have to do to take that salary and use that salary to create wealth or assets that provide for you the same amount of money a year to live on. In other words, you're creating residual income. You're creating independent income. You know, no matter how good your job is, you're always 
two words away from uh, financial problems, and they are, you're fired. <laughs> Welcome so much, Anthony. Thank you for joining us. And so what can you do? You have a job, and I know many of us have jobs. You know? What can you do on a job to create wealth? The interesting thing is that it does not happen instantaneously. It's not like hitting the lottery. But on a job, the way to create wealth is over time with a consistent income, consistent savings, let me say. So let's look at this. What do you have to do to guarantee 36000 a year? Well, let's assume, and, and there are many types of investments, but let's assume that you decide to create wealth by taking advantage of the power of compound interest over time. And let's further assume that you will choose to invest a monthly amount in a particular mutual fund that gives a return. First, determine how much wealth or assets in mutual funds, for example, would you have to accumulate to generate $36,000 per year residual income? Now, it may not be mutual fund, it may be stocks, it may be bonds. It may, in other words, whatever the investment, when you look at the amount invested and the return is the income that you receive each year. And so if we look at this, uh, let's assume we're using a mutual fund and this is kind of old days, and assume an annual return of 12% a year. So in other words, on whatever amount of money you have invested in that fund, every year, either quarterly or most of them pay quarterly, they're going to send you a total of $36,000 for you to live on, for you and your family. So $36,000 to determine how much principle is necessary to develop, to create $36,000. There's a formula. You divide the amount you need to earn each year by the interest rate of that particular investment. For example, assume a 12% interest rate. So $36,000 divided by 12%, which in uh, those of you who grew up old school, which means 0.12, <laughs> will provide $300,000. In other words, if you want a $36,000 return income each year on a 12% investment, you would have to have a principal of $300,000. So $36,000 is 12% of 300,000. So right now, whatever, uh, your income level, whatever you're making each year, and, I, and I'm going to assume it's comfortable, whatever that level is, then to determine the amount of money that you need in an investment at a particular return, divide that amount by the percentage of your investment. So for example, if it was a 10% investment, then that would mean you would need 36,000 divided by 0.10 which means instead of 300,000, now you have to have 400,000. The lower the, the return, the greater the amount of principal you have to have. So in today's world, if we're looking at, let's say a 5% return, okay. well, 36,000 divided by 5% gives you, oh, let's see, 10% would give you, a four, that's about $800,000 you're gonna need a little less than 800,000 in principal. So if that is the principal investment, then the question is, what do you do on your job to accumulate $300,000? We we'll stick with the 12% model, $300,000 over time. So using the standard compound interest tables available at most banks, mutual funds or libraries, you can see how much you will have in 10 to 30 years at various monthly investment amounts. So let's assume you're investing compound interest, 12% uh, a year, you're investing $100 a month. You say, okay, I'm making 36,000 a year. 
Uh, that's about 3000 a month. I'm not even going to take 10%. I'm taking less than 10%. I'm taking $100 a month and I'm investing it. Well, with a compound interest table, we're reading from page 155, $100 investment at a 12% year return in 10 years, you would have $23,004. In 20 years, you would have $98,924. In 30 years, you would have $349,496. Now that's amazing, folks. So this is saying that whatever your job, whatever your source of income right now, you can create wealth in the future over time by saving and investing a certain amount. And remember we said you want to the earning principle, you want to earn as much as you can. You want to save a portion, a portion of what you want you earn. You want to circulate the uh, amount, a part of your income wisely so that you have a surplus that you can then invest. So we're talking about the investment. Looking at the same compound interest table, if you invested $300 a month, that's still less than 10%. You know, we always talk about this. We say, you know, if you want to create long-term wealth, set aside at least 10% of your income each year into some type of investment to build for the future. So if we set aside $300 a month in an investment that paid a 12% return per year, in 10 years, you would have $69,012. In 20 years, you would have $296,772. And in 30 years, you would be a millionaire. $1,048,488. That's powerful. So there's no excuse. What, what does it take, though, to make that happen? It takes commitment and discipline. We said the other day, you have to pay yourself first. So if you want to create wealth and you're working on a job, pay yourself first. Take 10%, no matter what. You see, the, the, the challenge with investing is things happen. Life happens, man. Stuff breaks down. All kinds of things can happen to you and your family. But when you pay yourself first, it says this let's say $300, this $300 a month is going into this investment that yields 12% a year so that I know in 30 years. So we just said the person was what, 40 years old in our example. So at age 70, they have over a million dollars in assets and that million dollars will be generating $36,000 a year. So notwithstanding their retirement from the company, their social security, this is their own personal investment in their own retirement. Always pay yourself first. Take 10% of your annual income and invest in monthly installments. You will be investing at 10% of 36,000 a year. You'd be investing $33,600 a year. Isn't that amazing? $3,600 a month. I'm not going to tell you you won't miss it, but it's for a purpose. This is your seed corn, seed corn to create wealth in the future. From the compound interest table, you will see that if you invest $300 a month in a mutual fund or a stock or a bond or anything, any investment vehicle that earns 12% per year, you would have 296,772 in 20 years. In other words, you would have mastered the riddle of survival by age 60. If you started sooner or increase your monthly investment, you will achieve this independence much sooner. If, for instance, you started this program at age 30, you would be there by age 50. So that's almost $300,000 in 20 years. What this example shows is you don't have to have a big inheritance. You don't have to have special talents or contacts. You can solve the riddle of survival yourself over time with self-discipline. I always talk about a lady, Miss McCarty in Mississippi. And she was a, you will call it a washerwoman. And what that means in, in, the, in the old days, a washerwoman 
was a lady, a person who washed other people's clothing. You know, we, they didn't have laundromats and many of the, you know, I don't even know if the washing machine had been invented yet. So people actually washed by hand. So you had what was called washerwomen. And it's not a disparagement. That, just, that was just the history of the time. I guess you had washermen too. But washerwomen, and they would come and pick up your dirty clothes, take them home, and they would launder them and wash them and clean them and iron them and bring them back to you ready to use. Well, she was a washerwoman. She never made more than a couple hundred dollars a week, if that. But over her lifetime, by the time she retired, she was in her 80s, but over her lifetime, she was able to save and invest enough from her savings that she was able to set up, to accumulate enough money that she could give away $150,000 to endow a scholarship for young girls who needed money to go to college. She also had enough to live on the rest of her life. And so I say to each and every one of you on this broadcast, no matter what you're doing, you can, and I'll use the phrase, Luke, you can get rich. You can create the financial wherewithal where the income from your investments, from your assets are sufficient to take care of you. Now, there are other types of investments. There are really, I was in real estate for many years. You know, real estate investments may pay an even greater return but anything that pays a higher return, you also have a, a greater possibility for loss. You know, when you own property, you look at the, all the tenants you have, all the rental income, you factor out how many of them are not going to pay you. You factor out bad debts, you factor out re repairs, et cetera. And, but yet and still, if at the end of that year, you show a 12% or 10% return on your investment in that property, that's how you create wealth from your systematic investment. I hope this is beneficial because until we solve the riddle of survival, as long as we're on a job, we're only going to get paid as much as the people who hired us value us. And trust me, they're only going to pay us enough to keep us from quitting. But the other side of that coin is we're only going to work hard enough to keep from getting fired. <laughs> so folks, we have an incredible opportunity to create wealth, no matter what our condition. If we have a job, just systematic discipline, saving each month and investing into a particular return. Yes, I need to know about more about mutual funds. There's a lot of information on the internet about it. And mutual funds are basically companies that own a portfolio and a portfolio is a collection of stocks and bonds and they invest in those stocks and bonds and they make money. And so the mutual fund, people invest in the fund, especially folks who don't have a lot of knowledge of stocks and bonds. I have a friend, he said in the stock market, if you're getting your results in the stock market in the newspaper, you've already lost money. So the stock market is a very active thing, especially now in the electronic age. So a mutual fund is a way that an investor doesn't have to really know all of those intricacies. They have to believe in the fund. And you can always look at a fund's track record. You know, you can look at what type of return they've given over five years, over 10 years, over the life of the firm, of the, of the fund. And then you can invest accordingly. There's a lot of information about it on the internet, but it's a good vehicle. If you're a little more sophisticated, you may find other investments. People, some people invest in hard currency and gold and precious metals. But the idea is these are just mediums of investment. The concept is invest in something that generates a return to help you solve the riddle of survival for you and your family. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, our daily success reading number 151 from the 12 Universal Laws of Success, Super Achiever Edition. Be sure to get your copy, get it and give it. This is graduation season. There's no better gift than the 12 Universal Laws of Success to help someone you care about transform their lives and be what they want to be, do what they want to do and have whatever they want to have. And so it is. Tomorrow, same time, same station, folks. Share this broadcast. Study it. Between now and tomorrow, share it with 10 people, especially our young people, because they need to understand money. Dr. Herbert Harris saying, always be what you want to be. Do what you want to do. Have whatever you want to have. Always knowing 
that the best is yet to come. And so it is. <laughs>